Hello everybody, this is the What is on the Tabletop podcast and my guest today is the proud engineer and master creator of High Fleet Party Mix, Mr. Davis, welcome again. Thank you for having me, Joe. It's a pleasure to be here, as always. <laughs> yeah, and it is always a pleasure to look at your work. We talked the last time, I think, more than a year ago. And yeah, the, it's been a while. Yeah, hmm. a, a lot of stuff happened in between. <laughs> yeah. You are... Uh, well, there is no stopping the rock and there is no stopping you. You... Well, where do I start? I should start off topic, I guess, a little bit because you made your own dinosaur toy. Yes. Well, with a little help from Mattel, but... Um... Yes, I think last time we were speaking, I I was hinting about. Uh, I don't know yes, that I started hinting at it. Yeah, because it was one of those projects uh, that I thought I'll give this a crack. <laughs> it's like no one, why not? Um, yeah, so yeah, I converted the Mattel Jurassic Park Spinosaurus toy from the movie. Um, and I made a paleo correct Spinosaurus toy using that. And that was a very, that was a much bigger project than I had anticipated. Um, but I did it and I completed it. It was very expensive <laughs> exercise. Um, I learned a lot and, um, I don't know that I'm going to tackle a project that size again because. Uh, just between all the molding and the casting, yeah, it, it was it was quite quite huge. And yeah, it was like three months every night doing chipping away on it, sculpting, doing something. Yeah, it was it, a big project. Oh yes, it was it was quite the the journey to behold. If, even as um, ju ju just having the luxury w watching you doing it, but. I really appreciated it that you took everybody along for the ride and made little videos and uh, explaining everything. So yes, if you if you want your own paleo correct <laughs> Spinosaurus or get inspiration to do uh, something like that, uh, your Instagram is the way to check it out and uh, get um, well the the basics down or. Learn about the pitfalls such a project offers in <laughs> in plenty well, of occasions. Yeah, well, the the intention was the way I went about it. Uh, like, you know, I, I did go the expensive route with like making silicon molds and and casting the pieces. If I just made um, the parts as one offs using you know with epoxy sculpt and all that sort of stuff, I think yeah. It, because then I wouldn't have had to worry about all the the molding and the casting. Um, but the original intent was, I was thinking, look, there is a lot of dinosaur fans out there, and I'm pretty sure in the world, you know, there's going to be one or two who will probably want one of these once I put it out. And, and sure enough, there is. There's a bunch of people who, who um, well, there's a bunch of people who really want one. Then there's the... The, though, then you exclude all the people once you tell them how much it's going to cost you. It costs them to get one. Um, but then there's just there's a couple of them there who are just going, I don't care. I don't care how much it costs. <laughs> just give it to me. Shut up and take my money. Uh, yeah. Um, so I so the intention was to be able to replicate this at least you know two more times. Um, so I could do two different versions. So I actually have gotten to the point where I have two more disassembled Spinosauruses all, all cast. So I've got the full kit there, ready to go. They're ready for paint, basically, paint and assembly. Well, paint and assembly, yeah, um, because there's a little bit more work, you know, tidying up the seams and everything when you put them together. Um, and I've just run out of steam. I just don't want to look at them. <laughs> I'm just like, 
so un- uh, like they they're just not fun anymore doing like it, it it was a weird experience because like the first one I did it for myself to see um if I could do it you know because I was, I was going into a lot of unknown territory and that was a really fun exploration and as soon as I decided oh, I'm going to make a couple to sell so I can recoup the cost of the project I just uh, it just so it feels like a job Joe <laughs> and, <it's> just, <laughs> and I was just like, ah, oh, I just uh, look. They're there. I, I've, I, I'll, I'll get round to them. I think. Um, the, the thing that also knocked the wind out of my sails was this. Um, the couple of people who really wanted them. They're international, and postage costs to send something as big as this toy is overseas is just insane. Um, at the moment, so I, I figured I, I got some time. Um, and by the by the time I reckon by the time I get round to assembling and painting them, um, someone will have dug up another Spinosaurus skeleton and rewriting how they look. So it'll be out of date. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I see I see a lot of parallels to um other uh other pitfalls of the hobbies where you have a project and you're working on it and you think yeah yeah i'm i get around to it and then a new codex comes out and renders it completely useless something in 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 that direction but i totally understand you when you say it feels like a job for me not that much in the miniature or creating space because i do not dare to go that route or I, I tried it out and uh, recognized pretty fast that I do not want to feel about painting and converting that it is a job because they, that would would render this hobby for me completely useless. What, what I'm doing to myself is writing my own rules for Warhammer 40k. I will hopefully start a Inquisition 28 campaign this uh, month. But yep. that is something where I sit down, I write the rules, put everything together, and that feels so much like a job that yeah. I lose any motivation and joy in a very short period of time yeah yeah um uh, yeah it's it's a very interesting it was an interesting experience because um like um in my my real job the one that pays pays money you know i am actually a storyboard artist so my moniker the storyboard guy is a that's my registered business name. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's a bit weird. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I've been, I was working on a, on a kid's show. Um, it's for toddlers and it was just killing me. I was just bored. Very <laughs> working on to- toddler kids shows. It, it can, they're just, uh, there is, uh... you know, I, I love, I love that they pay the bills. I love it. But, <laughs> But oh my god, they they can be really tedious and really boring um, to do because they generally they're just not that challenging. You know, they're not uh, asking for they're, they're challenging in a different way. So um, it, well, it's too, kind of I, I yeah suppose to tone it everything you know you just tone it down to the level of, well, a toddler that needs to learn all the basic stuff. And you do that over and over again, and there are only so many cats you can find in a picture, I suppose. It's a lot of that sort of stuff, storyboarding. Just It's a very flat space, a lot of this toddler television stuff. It's, you know, they don't really go in for a lot of depth of field or cinematography or, you know, and it's a lot of, like, <laughs> just big cartoon head smack dab in the middle of the frame just talking um, you yeah. know it, it, it's you know you do it once and it's just you can just like do it in your sleep pretty much um so and... so is it uh just just i'm just getting curious here is it um the the whole 
people that are involved. It, it is just um, something like, okay, I'm starting out with the toddler, with the shows to toddler, and I do that for, I don't know, a year, half a year, and then I move on to something more complex, or is it really, well, I suppose there is there are some very dedicated people who want to put the best uh, <laughs> toddler kids show out there. Oh, look, don't don't get me wrong. We do our best work whenever we work, you know. Um, and that that's part of the job. I think it's part of any job, isn't it? It's like you're not going to love it 100% of the time, um, regardless of the cat poster on your wall that says, you know, <laughs> you're fine, hang in there. find something you like and you never work a day in your life sort of thing. Um, it, it, you know, it, it, I think... For, for someone like me, I like to be challenged and I like um, to be learning stuff. And that's kind of what my hobby space does for me. So getting back to that Spinosaurus, when I'm, you know, trying to mass produce something I've already made, I've already learned all those lessons, I've already done it, you know, um, mm. it's just treading the same path for me. And I think that's why... I lost interest in it. So, yeah, my hobby space is kind of providing me with the the challenge and the the new and the learning that you know you might that I might not get from my day to day job. Uh, is so, that yeah. why you? Excuse me. Is that why you uh, change up your color scheme so much? Absolutely. <laughs> Okay. Absolutely, there That's, is. Uh... I I do, I cannot. Oh man, yeah. No, when, when it comes to like the, the war gaming space and people who who paint entire Tyranid armies the same paint scheme, I like. I think about that, and it just like, and I I get panic attacks just thinking about painting <laughs> everything the same. <laughs> like painting a unit of thirty. That's a stretch. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can um, understand I, I that. I uh, I digressed from from batch painting. I I mean, at my my Turnit army was painted only because uh, the, the tournament required it, and there yeah. were some really long nights where I was just sitting, dry brushing, uh, and I'm to this day I'm very happy about the color scheme I have, and it has turned like into my safe space of painting because I know it so well that I can just throw it down and feel good about it. And yeah. um, if we should ever in our lifetime see a rework of the Turnit range by Games Workshop, I plan to do a new color scheme, but I am very unsure what I will settle with if I settle with a new one. But yeah, as you, as you said, what you were working uh, modus operandi is, uh, it it just dawned to me like, oh yes, you have you are a tournament player, you have a mass army, and uh, there is a lot of the same stuff, and it it, it was quite self-explaining when someone looks at your work is. High fleet, it is high fleet party mix for a reason, and it is yeah. a good, it is it is a good reason, I think. And yeah, yeah, my my, my party mix is like I, I I look at my bugs as like the was it the the fauna of a, of some death world, you know? I I don't really think of them as tyranids. I think of them as wildlife. So that that that's how I th you know see them. So you know, you look at animals on our own planet and they're all different colors and shapes and sizes and they don't look like they've all just come from the same thing you know the same bug just bigger um, with bigger arms or guns or something um yeah so that, that's how i think about my bugs and yeah it is about keeping them fresh and i think think like um i was there was a there was a um creature conference a couple of weeks ago that uh, you were giving a presentation on alternatives to the coconut crab scheme um <laughs> I, I feel very um very much the same about the coconut 
crab scheme. Like, it doesn't even look like the coconut crab. Like, that's what really annoys me. <laughs> it's like, you look at the pictures of the coconut crab, it's like, it, why? Like, the coconut crab does not look like that. Um, so, I don't know, like, even the color choices, but, um, yeah, and... Uh, it's it's a popular scheme. I get it. I'm not like degre- denigrating people for painting it because you know it, it has its you know it has its advantages and stuff. But there are so many interesting looking crustaceans out there, and I want to paint them all. You know, I want to paint bugs to look like them all. Um, yeah, and uh, and that that's what I love. I love that sort of diversity there, and it's. You know, I, I, yeah, the thought of painting everything like one thing, yeah, it just does not appeal to me at all. It would never get done. I could never do it. So, <laughs> yeah, um, but I, I do have, I do have one paint scheme though that if, if I had to paint an army, I would do it. And it's, uh, I think, if you look on my Instagram page, I did uh, a kill team. Uh, my killed team it was like oh um, yes the ghost one the ghost one yeah i love that paint scheme it is so easy and quick to do and if anybody ever like twisted my arm to to make space marines or anything like that that's how they're gonna be they're gonna be just ghost space marines because i love that paint job and it just it stands out and it works yeah um and it, it it's fun to do. Like it's one of those things I can do in front of like the the computer monitor with a movie on and just punch it out. It's a it's a very fun paint scheme. Yes, I but, I agree. And um, Games Workshop actually is uh, ahead of the game when it comes to that. I mean, with the Night Haunt, um, the make it a ghost army well it is a ghost army but the pretty obvious scheme but um i think back in the chaos codex fourth edition there was a war band called the warp ghosts which already tended a little bit in uh the the direction of this paint scheme and yeah it is it uh, also comes in variations. You have, um, well, the all my army is magma or all my army is stone, which, which there is a lot of great um, storm casts out there that are just look like stone statues. And yeah, yeah. You don't have to be uh, afraid of a, well, very simple, very monotone scheme if it looks yeah. great. Or um, as I've seen... We recently had a little tournament um, where one of the players made a uh, the OSL on his Necrons. Were not the super airbrushed ones, but with, with a brush. But through the army, it was so consistent that it looked good. Just uh, it. It's sometimes a little bit troubling when you see a mix of techniques in an army, but if it is all done in the in the same uh, style, you can yeah, get away yeah, with basically has... everything, and that is what works with your yeah. turnets because well, you use the same technique yeah, I... to throw the colors down, and it, there is a not a. Um, Coherency in the colors, but in how they are applied. And that is a unity that is important, I think. Yeah, I, I'm actually finding um, with the new codex that's come out, because, you know, it's made a whole bunch of new units relevant now. So you sort of go, oh, okay. And so I... I, I I've got to make a whole new army. <laughs> it's it's kind of like having a second go uh, at it as as well, and it's kind of I, I've got it actually on my table behind me. I've just sort of set it up for a game today, and a lot of it's unpainted at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's it's really leaning. I'm I'm finding I'm I'm wanting a lot more consistencies in the models now, and I'm moving. 
away from the GW stuff a lot more and looking for like more buggy stuff like insectoid or crustacean type things. Um, and yeah, so so yeah, and just planning planning my conversions around that, um, making making it look a, a bit more unified in that that sort of aesthetic as well now, as well as. Yeah, I don't know. Without without like um, go, going for the obvious GW design cues with all their bugs, you know, they all have that chitin armor and stuff. Like try trying to keep the 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 theme of like the wildlife of a planet. So, yeah, but yeah, doing just, that quite well, and you yeah. are now enjoying the wondrous uh, ways of. 3D printing as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I got a 3D printer in the um, in the in, in, Jesus. There, so much has ha I've gotten into so much, haven't I? Um, yes, you that have. was <laughs> that that was hands down one of the best um, hobby investments I've made. Um, for not only uh, the supply of really fun, beautiful sculpts from other artists like and th that that's what i really love about it um like you can admire like it's people that, that put out lots of really nice concept art and um of all sorts of things you go wow that's a really great design that 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 but it, it just stops there um but being able to grab an stl of somebody's work and print it out at a, at a scale that you want um and hold it in your hand and really admire it like get, really go wow and, and really look at the design choices that people have made during the sculpt or even then just go oh um i like those parts <laughs> you know it's like my bits box is just is like infinite now um with the 3d printer and yeah and there's some things you just you want quickly and and it's like like one of the one of my goals this year was to try and get a bit more um into the 3d sculpting side of things so i could create my own models and print my own models all parts and stuff like that um my the roadblock i have with that is my my day job is sitting in front of a computer all day and digital sculpting is like a hobby that's got me sitting in front of a computer all day. And that, that has been, that's my roadblock. That's where I, I haven't been getting into it. But what, what I've found is there's a whole bunch of people doing sculpting much better than I ever could, who are somehow coming up with the ideas that I kind of would be leaning to anyway. So, you know, I, I can grab them take them wholesale or if I don't 100% like them, I can modify them in a standard scratch build sort of way or just take the parts. And, and yeah, so that's scratching that itch. Right? I'll pro I don't know. I might get into the 3D sculpting eventually. Um, <laughs> I, got, I got so many cool little printed bugs and things I've got to paint. Um, yeah, I'm looking so, yeah. at your... Uh, alternative harpy which you had from uh, my mini factory yeah yeah really uh, that... cool looking bug it is a really cool ah uh, those uh my mini factory who who was that it's lord of the print i think that that yeah, thing I think it's it is like, lord of the print yes they did um they've got this range of like wood elves riding insects they're beautiful sculpts beautiful um the the thing i've learned in my 3d printing journey is there is um the, there's certain designs that lend themselves really well to printing for war game miniatures i don't think lord of the print is one of them um i <laughs> a lot of the details on those like um Flying elf bugs are so fine, hmm. and um, you really need to be printing with a good, flexible ABS-style resin um, for those details to be durable enough 
for transport and tabletop gaming. Um, yeah, that, that's what I've found with, with their, their just kind of everything's just a little bit too fine and pointy. And where uh, on the other hand, you'll find um, creators like um, 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 who am I thinking of? Uh, oh my god, I'm just blanking on them. Puppets War, um, yes. and you can you can set those are designed to be durable gaming prints. They're just a little bit chunkier. You can print them in like a standard resin, and they'll be durable enough. You know, e even though they've got like you know sticky out bladey blade weapons and and like you know lots of long fingernails. There, there's just there seems to be a, there's definitely a design parameter that um like puppets war have gotten onto they know how deep their details have to be to print well and take paint they're just yeah there's like they're 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 my gold standard for printed minis um the puppets war stuff because you get people who um design really great looking designs and they look great when in the render but when you sort of print them out the details aren't deep enough or they get bowed by the supports or you know ah yeah so that it's been a really interesting journey delving into this the 3d printing space i think it's still maturing um i i think it's really exciting um i i lo love it i just wish i had more people to play tabletop games with that's my main problem because, yeah, I just I want to put miniatures on the table. I want to paint miniatures, put them on the table. I want to play with my toys. Um, and there's some really awesome game systems out there. So the, the games exist, the miniatures exist, all the parts and inspiration, that all exists. It's just finding the people and the time. That's yeah. my biggest hurdle with, within the gaming space. <laughs> Oh yes, um, yeah. I as I'm part of a gaming club now. Even there, it is uh, a problem to at least get uh, everyone together uh, at the same time. It is it is uh, the same problem. Uh, regular um, role playing game gaming groups suffer from just getting everyone to the table at the same time and i mean in the t uh, tabletop gaming space in the war gaming space it is a bit easier because you only have to have one opponent you <laughs> at the time and that is easier to achieve but yes i i do under i do understand the problem and then of course with the different um gaming systems that it's like well if you're open to it all you can easier find uh, someone to play with but some people are saying okay i have limited time i will only stick to the one game system or maybe three game systems because i don't want to learn new rules yeah, and yeah. all that and, and yeah and it's a real shame like um because 40 ga 40k is the only game in town sort of thing uh, you know, around here. So if you do want a game, you sort of have to gravitate to the most popular thing. It may not be the most <laughs> enjoyable or um, efficient gaming system, let's just say. Um, and it, it's a shame because I, I think with, with 3D printing, yeah, you know, online publishing... game This sort of tabletop gaming has never been more accessible um like from from a financial or you know where do i find this stuff standpoint um it's just finding the people um i think is is the hard thing it's the social networking and, and it's yeah i do, and i don't know i i'm an introvert <laughs> you know and i live in a small country town um oh my god so, oh jesus yeah yeah, uh, doing the doing I've, the I'm very thing. I'm very grateful that you're talking to me. I just want to point that out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and the the other thing I've discovered in this journey, um, because like I've only been back into the tabletop gaming side of it for like eight nine months, you know. Um, so this whole my whole 
exploration of the tabletop gaming in real life with other people is is still really young and fresh and I've learnt a lot in that as well. And the the biggest lesson I learnt was the um because I, I, I came my first sort of introduction was through the online space, you know, getting inspiration from other artists putting YouTube videos up, Instagram, your Facebook, you know, the kit bash converting people. You know, and I just started making bugs and, and stuff like that. And when I had enough, I decided when I had enough to make an army, I decided, oh, well, I might try and learn to play the game. Um, so I connected with some uh, the local scene and I, I kind of went into to that thinking that I would find like-minded people who were as passionate about the hobby side of the game, like the painting and the modeling and the kit bashing. Um, and that just was not the case. Um, I, I rarely met, you know, there, there was only maybe three other players who had painted armies. I, you play into a lot of gray plastic, um, not a lot of kit bashing going on. Um, a couple of guys were 3D printing, but it was it, it was 3D printing because you know they were there because you know to save money. There the was an ec- it was an economic decision to them. Um, yeah, so so yeah, finding that there was just not that uh, the other sort of creative people in that space in that local scene, and that sort of that was both disappointing um, and a bit confusing going into it. So, because, you know, it's expectations not meeting reality sort of thing. Um, like, and I, I don't know how it is in other other people's gaming circles because um, this is a sample size of one, really. Um, but, yeah, and so so I think the, the online space kind of concentrates all us creatives together in, in a way the algorithm works that way i guess and yeah. and w- when you think of it that way it's a worldwide pool and you know you probably know 20 people um, in the space um it yes. kind of makes sense <laughs> yeah yeah it, yes of course it is and it gives you a false sense of uh, plentiness or uh, availability of people because, well, it is still a niche hobby and even the tabletop wargaming is the, is the niche of a niche and the group gets smaller and smaller and it is um, very, well, very difficult to talk about cliches, what kind of people you will find and you can play against. Well, if, if uh, the group is big enough, you will well, get the Stereo- power gamer stereotype and so on and so forth but that does not tell a lot about the rest of the character of the person or what they're interested in or how much they invest in their hobby yeah, yeah that's it- an interesting point um I, I would say that um anecdotally the the group i was involved with um would be a really good representative cross-section of the you know, proportionally, I would say. Uh, I, I think that's... When you think about it that way, you know, there's a lot of people who just buy in. They're not really into the hobby. They want to play the game. And I think there's, that's kind of a majority. They just want to put their GW minis on. The, you know, they like the lore, I guess. Yeah. Um, and that, that seemed to be the majority. And then, like, those who get to the... Just like the painting side, you get it gets a smaller cross section, and then there's you know the weirdos like me who who really want to embrace all the sort of creative weird stuff, um, kit bashing, converting, scratch building, three D printing, have the whole lot. And it, yeah, and you've got your guys that are three D printing because they want to play the game but can't afford the GW stuff. <laughs> um, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, so it, I, I would say that was probably a and and personality types too. I think would probably be a very accurate cross section. You definitely got 
um, a, a, you know, you saw all the all the stereotypes, all the archetypes there were represented for sure, um, <laughs> for but, sure. Well, with the gaming club, I'm in a super luxurious lux luxurious position Are that you? I can pick out who I want to play against, and that is a luxury that not everybody has. I mean, I started out with a two friends, uh, one that was uh, a few towns away, so playing against him was quite rare, and um, the other one was uh, the um, kid that uh, got bought all the expensive minis uh, from their parents, so it, w it were quite one-sided games. I mean, you are kids, you're, t you're figuring it out, and uh, right now, if looking back to it, it's just, um, yeah, it, it is so, we, we, it is, it is really odd because we are in the, the, a very, in this very niche space and then experiencing that uh, all over the world we are many, but as soon as it breaks back to locally, there are not that many. <laughs> That's uh, right. Yeah, and and then if, and then for me to say, ah, oh, I really don't want to play against this person because getting stomped into the ground is no fun uh, in any case. Or, well, I, I, I mean, I started out like this. I uh, barely painted. I mean. Just prime prime it, put it on the tabletop. I want to play the game. I I want to replay um, the what I read in the little lore that was in the in the code. He says. I mean, now it is well a, a library of lore you can relate your games to, and this is why Dark Heresy, um, yeah, the Horus Heresy started off so well because now we have fictional historical gaming in a way. Yes. And that is a new niche of the Space Marines, well, the Space Marines, because not enough Space Marines, but that is another can of worms to get into. And yeah. yeah uh, the community seems to uh, divide itself even further now. And it, it is not a... Well, a... A, uh, a user base that is cannibalizing itself through different through um, choice they have because it, it reminds me a bit of uh, when online games came out and well you and your friends you all all played the one online game there was and now there is this great variety and it is very hard to even find with my group of friends to decide okay we now together play this one game because it is very fast that you say oh, i don't like that i don't play that i have an issue with the publisher or what and so on and so forth and that is creeping into the hobby space more and the fact that it is an analog game and not a global community you can tap into it, I just haven't thought about it that way. It just sprang to mind right now that actually having a lot of choice might not be that good for the wargaming community, but I might be wrong there. It is um, a very yeah, interesting I, subject. I, I'm, I'm new to it. Um, like, for me, it started with... Kill team trying to organize a, a, a reason to to play games with my brother. So, but then COVID got in the way of that. We we still, I think we've only ever played one game of Kill Team, um, and that's like two editions. <laughs> you know? um, but I started playing regularly with another friend. You know, we we just meet up once a month and we play. and we we're playing Kill Team for a year, and we just got to the point where like. This game is not fun. Like the new, the the new system. We well, we played the previous system and the new system, and and we just get got to the point. Well, this game is just not fun. 
<laughs> and it's like, and I think at the time, uh, you know, someone, um, there was a YouTube video mentioned this game Space Weirdos, and I decided, all right, I'll, you I'll, made uh, uh, a great retinue uh, for that game. <laughs> I look, I'm, I'm loving that game. So, it's, Kill Team for me was me thinking, okay, here's a here's a little game I could play quickly with my brother and my friend and teach my son when he's ready. My son is ASD. He has some cognitive issues, you know. Um, so playing games uh, with him, like he's got his head around chess and and stuff, and that's brilliant. And but working with him on the whole table flipping that's part of the game when you lose <laughs> has been a challenge. Um, so when it comes to tabletop war game, he, like he's always been fascinated when we're playing kill team, but there was just no way I could teach that real system to him. There's just mm. no way. Um, and there's no way that he could play a game at, at all. There's just too much going on. Um, and so I looked at the Space Weirdos and I was able to sit down with him, not having played the game myself, and I sat down with him. We both learnt the rules. We both played the game. Within two hours, we were done. We had a great time. It was really fun and stupid. And... I, I have not played a, a game of Kill Team in under two hours. I don't care what, what? people say. Oh, it's an hour 45. I, can't, I could not play a game in under two hours. Like, I don't know with people are not counting the setup time or something when, when they say that, but um, it's like I've, it's, it's always been two and a half, three hours for Kill Team. That like, is um, very surprising to me because I, well, I played... The first Actually, edition. I lie, Joe. I do lie. I've played one game in under two hours. That was when the new Pathfinders came out, and it was over in turn two. <laughs> I got shot off the board. It was the mo least fun I've ever had playing a game. Um, anyway, continue. Well, I interrupt. Uh, I I always ca well. I I had a regular group, and I. Well, that when it started all, I wrote a little modification for the first edition of Kill Team, and yeah. that got tested. And the when it really takes a lot of time, we were done in one and a half hours. I am really surprised how you get up to two hours for Kill Team. I, I. I cannot imagine it right now, but if I watched you, maybe I would be like, oh, that is going on. But right now I'm like, wait a minute, how can you take so long for that game? Yeah, you know, I, <laughs> it's, I, I count the setup time as well. Like, so, so the most Kill Team games I'd played, I was actually playing in the shop. Um yeah, this, this is another experience. You know, when, when you talk about the cross-section of the gaming community, um, that was organized events um, and you had to organize the time to meet with your opponent. I had I had opponents who wouldn't show or they'd arrive an hour late or, you know, it was just, you know, okay. I, that, that was another thing that got me offside with Kill Team because the, the quality of people... Like, it was really Russian roulette. It was the, the quality of opponent. Like, I, I had opponents who would not turn up, show up late, or when they did show up, obviously did not want to be there. Wow. You know? <laughs> they weren't there to enjoy a game. It was like, right, I've got, you know, it's like, I've got an hour. Let's get this over and done with. It's like, right. <laughs> okay. Um, Why are you even here? <laughs> I, um... That is, so, that is yeah. quite the hobby horror story you're experiencing. So, so that, that, that was my experience with the, the whole pickup ga um, game kill team scene. So I am just not interested in that anymore. That's an experience I feel like I've done. I'm <laughs> just like over. Um, and I, to be honest, I, like I just don't, didn't enjoy the game that much. Just the balance was just so bad. Um, 
Well, you the know, only you, thing you, I yeah. I know about the second edition is that it is a good game unless you sp unless you play Space Marines that seem to be uh, dominating everything. Um, uh, look, uh, you know, I I I'm not going to go on a tirade about no, the new the, system. We, I, we I don't just, need to. <laughs> no, I I I just found it. Uh, it wasn't what I was looking for. I don't think it's a fun game. I'm kind of there with 40k as well. Like. 40k i'm still trying to have fun with this joe i'm still <laughs> oh I'm, I'm still God. hanging on i'm trying to have fun with it i have a friend i play with we have have fun because he's a great guy so i think i think that's you know i think the the who you play with is is far more important it um is. i've heard you know i've heard a lot of things about one page rules being quicker um and 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 just more fun and i'm thinking if you know if my space weirdos experience is as anything to go by i think i probably would enjoy one page rules a lot more because it seems to be able to go quicker the cognitive load is is probably going it seems to be less um yeah and it doesn't take a whole day to play you know, like I'm, I'm still like even with this new codex. It's like I'm never going to f play a game, a, a game of 40k through to five turns. I, I just can't see it happening. It, there's just so it just takes so long. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's just well, so much to think about. <laughs> well, I, I'm interested because I know Space Weirdos through uh, Tabletop Minions on YouTube. Uncle Adam, yeah. great man. Oh from, yeah, that's that's where I got it from. Yeah, from Wisconsin. Uh, um, pitch it to me. Why should I play Space Weirdos? Um, okay, so why should you play Space Weirdos? It's like if you like putting, crafting your own warbands, Space Weirdos has got you covered. You can build the weirdest, eclectic little warband you want. Um, you know, like I've got a giant dinosaur ogre, a triceratops ogre, and I've got this little remote control, you know, suicide, what, what, what's equivalent to a bomb squig in, in kill team, I guess, with two grenades. And it's, it's just, you can, and it, it has this kind of, I know a lot of people don't like RNG in their, um, in their tabletop war gaming, but well, I let me say those people are wrong, and are in Jesus is our Lord and Savior. <laughs> and but like in Space Weirdos, it's got like this whole you never, you never like guarantee to kill, you know, and it has some really weird interactions that that can shake up the game, you know, things just happen, kind of funny. Um, the system is so simple. Um, it's really easy to learn and, and it gives you a lot and, and it's got a lot of tactical depth, um, in it. Um, surprisingly, there's lots of little combinations you can do to get around, um, you know, CP strat stuff that, that you can play as well, but it's all like, you know, there's not, not a lot of gotchas in the game, which I, I kind of like. You know, and it keeps you on the toe on your toes. Like you do have to adapt to what you were doing because of the RNG. You know, it throws a spanner in the works quite often. You can't really count on ah, this is my rocket launcher, and I'm gonna like blow away all three of your guys there, and you can just flub that roll, and nothing happens, or someone dodges it. Yeah, you know, it it has it. I, I feel like it's got a real cinematic sort of sensibility to it you know you can really play with those little moments of you roll on the wound table but it just knocks the guy back and he's got to move that far away and it's just everything's really simplified and really efficient and i don't know that i i, I can't speak to the balance um that much um because you could definitely min max in any game system but it's designed for fun, and it it comes through in the little ten page book or something. It's a ten page rule set. It's fantastic, um, yeah. And it comes through, and you just do fun 
stupid things. You, but it's it's kind of like the same. You could bring in your like um, tack ops cards from Kill Team if you wanted to add a a bit more depth and complexity to it. Um, but yeah, just just as a game where you want to put your miniatures on the table, you're not like, oh, I've got to have the Sisters of Battle miniatures from Games Workshop to play this game. You know, it's like, I like that one Sister of Battle. I'm going to put her in my warband, and I like that Space Marine, and I like that Orc. <laughs> and I like, put them all together in your little warband and make something work. And that, that, that to me is it's freedom it's it's interesting you know um each week i can play a different warband i get my space ghosts or i've got my bounty hunters or i've got like my flying gargoyles and you don't have to know all the rules of each particular warband and the ins and outs of their stratagems and all that stuff that goes along with Kill Team. It's much easier to just kind of pick up your this warband and look at their stat sheet. Okay, I know what these guys can do, and okay, I know how, how I should probably play them to achieve this mission. Uh, you know, it's fun. Like, that. that's my pitch to you. It's a <laughs> lot more fun. It's a lot more, you know, fun in every aspect. It supports my, my scratches my hobby itch to paint different things and put together different things. Like, you know, I, I don't mind space marines and space marine models and those archetypes, but I don't want to paint an army of them. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, I've got I've got a little warband of seven of them. It's great, fine. Um, but, you know, and if I want to put some, a venom trope on the table, I'll make up rules for it. it it's, it, it's got some, it's got a really good little, you know, generator system for making characters and stuff and th that's what kill team really lacks and i think a lot of people are lamenting the list building side of it the customization side of of kill team it's very much the catering and i and i dare say through my experience with the gaming community community it is speaking to the majority of that this is locked in non-customizable this is what the customer wants you know so i you know, I have a feeling the marketing department at, at um, Games Workshop know what knew what they were doing, and I think the people who want customization and um, you know, are in the minority when it comes to this style of game. But I like I, I like sp space weirdos. I'm ready to put my kill team stuff on eBay. <laughs> you know, I can't see myself playing it again. Um, yeah. There's my pitch. Okay, quite the, <laughs> uh, quite quite the 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 radical or bl <laughs> black and white picture here. <laughs> no, what? no know. redeemable <laughs> qualities for Killer Team. Space Weirdos Look, rules, rules supreme for the person it, who wants it, fun. <laughs> it rules for me. Um, well, when you get like, I was watching um, um, Glass Half Dead. He's one of the 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 major kill team YouTubers, um, and you can watch his videos from when the second edition came out, you know, to his enthusiasm with the game system, and ever since then it's been this kind of declining. You know, his latest video was a collab with another kill team YouTuber. And the the tag was "Is Kill Team Fun?" <laughs> you oh, know? Gee, oh god! Oh. I mean, it's, <laughs> and it's like, it, it is kind of clickbaity, to be honest. But it's just it's clickbaity, to, but click just but to have it out theme. there as an open question is um, it's, it's on theme, and you watch Glass Half Dead, and you can see he's like, you know, I've branded myself as a kill team channel. I'm trying <laughs> to make content, but I really just don't like the game. You can just see it. <laughs> it's like. It's it and and I was on I'm on that journey with him. I was on that journey with him. Um and, yeah, that but is... I think I've just gone uh, you know because I'm not wedded to the game system. I'm just going, yep, nah, I'm done. Um, yeah, that is the moment but... for me where I'm like, okay, this is going wrong. I have to do it myself. I have to throw yeah, the well... stuff out that is not fun and put the stuff I like in and well, I have the I am blessed 
in well not the literary way but i feel that way that i have a group that tries and, and sticks with me and tries uh, the rules out and is on board and trusts in my capabilities and so far it was a blast i is that you I, are you are so lucky and i'm yes. really envious of you being like that's the thing you know being able to write a rule system and have people to play it with you that's pretty cool you know <laughs> that's that's yeah well, if you may, well, well, I've this is this is just pandering my ego now. <laughs> if if you want to return to Kill Team, the first edition, maybe you 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 give my my custom mod a try. I, I did I did not like the first edition. Very oh, much okay, <laughs> then never mind. <laughs> like... Never mind then. Go go uh, going on. Um, so we have three uh, D printing, space weirdos. What else was was great, amazing in the year we haven't talked? <laughs> in the year, um, what else? I'm just kind. I got to look at my cabinet and see what I've done. Um, well, yeah. one thing I can tell you is that uh, you really uh, put uh, all the members of the creature conference on the spot. Like, oh yeah, you're making a dimacron. Let's. I, I'm doing one, and now you have done the tyrannocide. You. D what do you do you enjoy well i i know what you do enjoy but do you uh get a little a little competitive when it comes to that or is it just good fun no no not at all not at all like um where that all comes from is like watch like seeing those guys uh say i'm going to change this model I don't like it and, and doing their design criticisms of what they think they should do and actually seeing them do it and watching, I, I want to see that Dimacron <laughs> finish, you know? <laughs> um, I want to see the Death Daisy, you know? Like, I, I agree. Like, I, I love those ideas and oh. I want to see them executed. And th this is, um, you know, it, it's a thing that, like, I love about the art space and it's the thing i found like when i went from high school to art college um art college i found my people i found people who had ideas and they were creative ideas and you could bounce off them and be inspired you know they got someone who come up with a with a great idea and you go oh man that's a really good idea and it sparks a little spark in you to go ah oh, i want to try that but i i want to do my take on it that you know and um so so yeah with the the uh, dimacaron it was like okay how would i do a dimacaron you know and i, I looked at it and i thought you know the, i you look at everything you don't like about it and it's like okay so how would i make that work for me and making those design choices and i i love you know being exposed to other artists i love seeing what they are doing like th you know the prolific thrifty squirrel on um instagram um shout out to know, thrifty that guy <laughs> that, that guy's amazing i think he's got like he, he must have like you shoot he, he must shoot green stuff out of his wrist like spider-man <laughs> i reckon uh he's just like yeah Maybe. i'm gonna make a new tyranid <laughs> You know, it's just like he—it's—it's it's insane the amount of sculpting that man does, and the and I love that the seeing the iterations of ideas and 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 the speed of that, and I I love that there's no right way, you know, and so you know I kind I've kind of latched onto the you know the um, creature conference guys because. Um, it's just inspirational, you know. I, okay, they go, oh, yeah, I'm doing do the Tyrannicide. And I was like, yeah, how would I, like, I'm going to get one eventually. How would I do that? And so it wasn't until I had some ideas that I actually got one. And and it, they come, when when the ideas hit, they, they come together really quickly, you know. So I've, I've also got the um, Tyrannifex. So it's probably going to be the next one. It's just a bit more work, that one. Um, I thought the Tyrannocyte would be really easy to just knock out. Um, and, yeah, so I'm, I'm in a bit of a build frenzy. I've, like, got a line of grey things that I need 
that I'm trying to get built so that I can just go into a paint frenzy. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I don't think it's competitive. It's definitely like, I love your ideas. I like this idea of, it's like, like, you know, any of those challenges, like, you know, like we do June Stealer and stuff like that. Um, I'm just not that inspired for Gene Stealers, you know, but someone says, oh, redesign the Demacron. Yeah, I have, have a crack at that. Um, redesign the Tyrannosite. Yes, because it's a really dumb model. The Tyrann FX is really, it's my least favorite Tyranid model. That's why I bought it because I, I just wanted to do something different with it. Um, I want to try and improve it. So, that will be my magnum opus. I think if I can make that thing look decent. Well, what a great lookout to the future. We yeah. have blasted through an hour. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> it was awesome talking to you again. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank You're you uh, for, for being less of an introvert. <laughs> I, yeah, introverted extrovert. I'll I'll happily talk to the people about my stuff, but yeah, it's like yeah. they have to be interested. Otherwise, I'm a wallflower. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I wish everybody else ha happy hobbying, and uh, we we will see what the future brings, and m maybe another talk, uh, maybe sooner than a year. We will see. <laughs> So, yeah, goodbye, everybody. Well, well, anytime, Joe. <laughs>